The tumult that had engulfed so many college campuses in the 60s reached even ivy-covered Yale University in 1970. But by then, 22-year-old senior Gary Trudeau had already begun to chronicle that tumult and the steps and missteps of his generation in just four panels a day. Before he graduated, the strip, now named Doonesbury, became nationally syndicated, sold, its creator recalls, as dispatches from the front lines of the counterculture, reporting from, from the trenches, and that they had a kind of generational authenticity. Now, four decades later, this crowd at Yale has come not to protest, but to celebrate the 40 years of the strip. Some have come to buy a lavishly illustrated $100 Doonesbury retrospective, a hefty bridge across a generation gap. I'm mainly getting the book because I know my parents are big fans. They are also there to attend a celebration of a Trudeau exhibit at Yale's Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library. Bull Tales, as it was called back in the beginning, focused on a star quarterback named B.D., not so coincidentally, the initials of Yale star quarterback Brian Dowling, number 10 down there on the field, who has always treated the strip with grace and good humor. My 15 minutes of fame has lasted 40 years, so that's pretty good. But the strip was never really just about a football player. It was about characters like Mike Doonesbury, the clueless undergrad, Zonker, the ultimate slacker, Joni Caucus, the emerging feminist. The story of the strip is watching a generation come of age. And now it's two generations who have come of age. When the strip was launched, an older generation of publishers recoiled at the idea of politics, especially Trudeau's unabashedly liberal politics, on the comics page. Not to mention the sight of an unmarried couple in bed. Maybe some three dozen newspapers dropped it. Trudeau despaired, only to be encouraged by his syndicator over a dinner. He said, don't worry, these guys die. And <laughs> damned if he wasn't right. As the years unfolded, people began saying, well, maybe there is room on the comics page for a strip about all the things that my generation were concerned about, politics, rock and roll, sex, drugs, and, 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 and particularly war. In 1983, at the top of his game, Trudeau took a 20-month sabbatical. When the strip returned, Trudeau expelled his characters from the timeless college campus setting. I had the strip lurch into real time and all the characters are thrown out into the real world. None of them are gainfully employed, they have any security in their lives, have stable relationships. And, you know, that's just the horrible things that writers do to their characters. This is decidedly not a case of art imitating life. Trudeau's professional successes include a Pulitzer Prize, a Broadway show, an animated special, and more than 50 collections that have sold 7 million copies worldwide. On the home front, he has been married for 30 years to Jane Pauley. Our pal here is getting married next week to a little-known cartoonist. Tom Brokaw had introduced them. It totally took. I think he married me because I was a girlfriend that was so low maintenance that, you know, we could have a, a date. I went home and he could go back to work. And the fact that both had earned great success at an early age helped cement the bond. Maybe what attracted Gary to me is that I appeared not to have been, you know, any more uh, taken with the fame thing than he was. He kind of earned a reputation as being a, a bad cartoonist in the first uh, years of his career. Brian Walker, like Father Mort, is a cartoonist. He works on Beetle Bailey and High and Lois and authored this new examination of Gary Trudeau's art. He wanted to experiment with other styles. Started using more close-ups and silhouettes. Nowhere was Trudeau's artistic reach more dramatic than when he put BD into the Iraq war and into a firefight that led to an utterly unexpected image. He gets them on a, on a uh, stretcher and they're moving towards the chopper. And it's only on the third day that we pull back and we see that he's, he's missing a leg. We also see that he's missing his helmet, which is the first time in, in what was uh, 36 years that, that he had been without it. This episode changed Trudeau's life. He began to spend time at VA hospitals, listening to fighting men and women, something he talked about at that Yale celebration. Uh, I worry I might not be getting it right. 
It's important to me that both the wounded and their caregivers understand that BD's story is not told at, at their expense, it's told um, in their honor. As for the strip, most of his original players are in their early 60s now, but will Trudeau ever take the step of writing the last, final, terminal chapter of their lives? I have a feeling that um, newspapers, the industry that I am part of, um, may go off a cliff before my characters do. <laughs> Which would still leave a remarkable legacy for a simple comic strip.